the phone rings and I'm at my shop and I hear out of the loudspeaker, it says, Bill Stewart, Jimmy Buffett, line two, Jimmy Buffett, line two. And I go, yeah, right. Nixon's on line three, right? Come on. Pick up the phone. I go, hello. I go, this, and he goes, hey, this is Jimmy Buffett. And I go, hey, this is Bill Stewart. I go, really? You're Jimmy Buffett? He goes, absolutely. And I go, cool. I said, what's up? And he goes, I want to get a uh, surfboard that goes into two parts. Uh, suitcase board, they call them in the 60s. Do you know about that? <laughs> no. They, yeah, they made a surfboard that because they wouldn't put them on airplanes, so you couldn't fly to Hawaii with a full-size surfboard. So the, uh, I, I think it was Maury or somebody like uh, Maury Pope. I think he's the one that started that. Hobie made one that went into two parts. Okay. They rode terrible. They had yeah, pipes sure. inside of them. The flex, there was just, uh, they were awful. He goes, I want to get one of those for my uh, airplane. And I said, I go, you know those ride like crap. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, dude, they've got pipes and stuff in them. They're crap. They're, it's not a good surfboard. And he goes, well, geez, man. He goes, uh, my roadies will do anything I want. And I go, you know I'm not one of your roadies, right? And he busts up laughing. He thought that was funny as hell because I gave him a little crap, right? He goes, what do you think I should do? I said, why don't you buy a bigger plane? <laughs> and that's when he went and got the Albatross. Really? So he took the advice? Yes. Oh, my gosh. That's in his book. He put my name in one of his songs at the end of the song, Mexico. I got my Billy Stewart longboard. And my mailman comes up. He goes, your name's in a Buffett CD. I go, no, it's not. You know, no, it's, you can barely hear it at the end. He mumbles it. Well, it's um, it's a cover of the James Taylor song, right? It's called Mexico. It's the but song it's the Mexico. the James Taylor song, I think. I don't know. Oh, okay. It's, and then at the end, he vamps a little bit, and I think that might Yeah, be. he mumbles a bunch of stuff, but he, yeah. I got my Billy Stewart lump. He, he, I stayed in his house. I said, oh, I want to go to the Keys. He goes, you can use my house if you want. And I said, really? So I ended up going down, staying in his house. Of course, the clock was frozen at 5 o'clock. Of course. <laughs> and he's just a, so I flew in his airplane over Irvine Meadows. He brought the plane here, and I got in the airplane, me and my wife, and he had one of those double doors that opens up. So I'm hanging out of the door, and it's kind of like surfing because when the plane banks, the centrifugal force keeps you from, like, falling out, right? And so I'm waving out the door. I don't even like airplanes, but this was kind of cool, you know? So he... And there's 20,000 people at Irvine Meadows, and we're circling around like this, and people are screaming, wait, they think I'm Jimmy Buffett. He was coming to play that show? He was play he's in backstage. Oh, okay. And I'm okay. overhead flying around, and, and the people, the crowd went nuts, That's right? That's amazing. It's really cool. But he, he, I've surfed with him in Montauk, New York, and went to his house in New York, had dinner with him, and he's, we have a, similar friends that know him for a long time, and... And uh, Corb Donahue, who worked for me, uh, he died of cancer. And to let you know the value and the beauty of Jimmy Buffett, he, when Corb died, they were scheduling a Volkswagen van trip. Well, Corb got too sick, and Jimmy came in. I got him a van, and he rented it from my neighbor, an old Volkswagen. He wanted to cruise the Kurotz Coast in a Volkswagen because he it's a flashback of his childhood, right? Mm. And him and Corb were going to do this. Well, Corb died. Well, Corb initiated all of his tour from the very first tour he ever did. Corb was in the music business. And Corb ended up broke and kind of drank too much. And sweet guy, really good guy. He died. Jimmy gets in his airplane in Texas, flies all the way to Orange County, rents a car, shows up at San Onofre in the rain and the wind. They set up the little speakers and he sang a song took the ashes, waded out in the freezing cold water, windy and rainy, poured Corb's ashes into the ocean. Then he went back to, uh, it makes me emotional. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it was, that's the kind of guy he was. Went Corb. back to the rib trader and sang more songs, told stories about Corb. Here's a guy that has become a billionaire and he gives a crap about some guy that kicked off his world. Corb was the first essentially tour manager for him, right? When nobody he else would the give whole him a thing. shot. Nobody, well, he, was he wasn't undone. famous at the time. Yeah. Nobody knew him. Right. You know, Jimmy told me, he says, yeah, he goes, first time I was ever paid five grand for a show, I goes, I went and smuggled some weed with that money. He goes, I knew this was a fluke and never was going to happen again. So I was going to be really smart and turn that money into money. 
fascinating. 